Hi folks, today's video is the final wrap up of my favourite books of 2018. This only includes books that I read for the first time in 2018, so rereads don't count. First up we have The Crimson Petal and the White by Michelle Faber. It is absolutely masterful. It's an epic book set in Victorian London and it follows a prostitute named Sugar who gets caught up in the life of this family and the, the man of the family is um, not the nicest of fellows. And I don't want to say too much more about the plot because th there's a lot to discover, but I love the level of detail in Michel Faber's writing and how vividly he brings Victorian London to life. Then we have Circe by Madeline Miller, which is also one of the most beautiful books on my shelf from this year. And this follows a goddess who is a, a lesser known character from the Odyssey. So in some ways, this is a retelling of the Odyssey from her perspective. We do meet Odysseus in this. And um, aside from that, most of it is centered around her world and the way that she creates the world around her. And I think that this book and Circe's life is a wonderful metaphor for women and creativity. Um, and you know, she's very much forging her own path in this. And um, she, she's an outcast from the rest of the gods. Her perspective is fantastic. The, the setting is, is wonderful and it has lots of twists and turns. This is a book that I definitely will be rereading at some point. Then we have The Parentations by Kate Mayfield and this is a book that Jan Campbell recommended to me. I think she had started reading it and thought that I would like it and I did. I absolutely loved this. What I found amazing about this is I didn't read the, the blurb before I, I read this. And that was an amazing way to go into this book. So I'm not going to go into in any details about the, the plot because it, it's so amazing to just discover this and try and figure out and piece together what's happening without knowing any of the context really. Um, needless to say, this is wonderful. I think if you like books like His Dark Materials that are grounded in reality, but have kind of, um, if not magical, then supernatural, um, elements in there, then I think you'd like this. It's got a partly historical setting and it's got some fantastic characters that you absolutely come to love throughout the book. Um, that's about as much as I can say without giving away spoilers. If you haven't already been spoiled, then I, I would encourage you to read this and go in blind. Next, we have Fatimir Farzine Mirza's A Place For Us, which is another epic story on a small scale. I think that's probably the best way to describe it. It's a, it's a family book. So it centers around this family and the, the course of, of their lives, it, it takes place over a, quite a long period of time. And we, we get the perspective of different characters within this quite small, tight-knit family. They're an American Muslim family. And that, that perspective obviously impacts the way the story is told and the, the individual perspectives that the characters have. Um, but it's also very much a, a story of contemporary America. 9-11 happens during the, the story and it shows the impact that that has on the characters. And just the way the different generations look at the world and, and how they experience life is, is really interesting. So these are absolutely characters you come to love um, very quickly. They are um, very lovable, very distinct characters as well. And I would highly recommend picking this one up. Next up, we have a book that I did not expect to enjoy as much as I did. And I've actually read this whole series twice now and I loved it even more the second time. It's one of those books that has a lot of detail in it and a, a lot of interesting characterization that I think you come to appreciate more the second time around. And that is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. And this is the first in a, a quartet. It's called The Raven Cycle and they are absolutely fantastic. Urban fantasy, paranormal elements. There are a group of boys and one girl from a different school and they come together 
to find this dead Welsh king who is supposedly buried somewhere along a ley line that is that runs through the town of Henrietta, which is where they all live and go to school. The legend says that if this if this king Glendower is woken, they um, uh, that the king will grant a wish to whoever wakes him. And th there are lots of other things going on. There's a prophecy that if Blue, who is the, the main girl, if she kisses her true love, she will kill him. There are prophecies and, um, and paranormal elements. And the way that Maggie Starfighter puts them all together is just incredible. I've actually had to stop myself from reading this whole series again. Um, possibly just on a loop. They're that good. Another absolutely fantastic one is this book here. This is The Binding by Bridget Collins. This doesn't actually come out until April next year, but I just have to start raving about it already. Um, I know I've talked about it in a wrap up, um, but this is another book that I went into quite blindly. Um, so this is an arc, obviously, um, because it's not out yet. And I probably had read the blurb at some point, but the main reason that I wanted one of these was because it's so beautiful and I wanted to talk about the design. But in order to talk about a design properly, you kind of need to have read the book to have a bit of context. And I absolutely fell in love with this. Again, it's a book that I went into blind and that just made this such an interesting experience because again, there are these kind of magical elements, but it's hard to tell how much of it is real to begin with and what's going on and it, it it starts off with you completely on the back foot and you just are thrown into it and don't know what's going on. So I would recommend going into this if you can with as few spoilers as possible and as little context as to what's going on because that the the things that are described in the blurb some of them don't happen till further on in the book so they might um, yeah, give you a, a sense of what's going to happen when you, you don't have that, um, you have that kind of blindness otherwise. And that is what makes this, this uh, the mysterious nature of this book really work. Again, I haven't said much about the book itself. Uh, it's got a historical setting. It's got um, some LGBT themes and it's to do with books. Need I say any more? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that that should sell it to most of you. And it's it's beautiful. So even if you don't like it, you have a beautiful object for your bookshelf. But I don't know why you wouldn't like it. Then we have a book by V.E. Schwab. This is Vicious. And this is a book that I've been meaning to read for a long time again. And because the sequel, Vengeful, was coming out this year, I thought I'd better get around to it. And I actually read this on my iPad on the Kindle app, which I don't enjoy doing, but it's testament to how good this book is that I actually got through it all and got through it pretty quickly. Because normally if I start reading a book on, on my iPad or on any sort of screen, I don't get very far with it. And I did, so that was fantastic. And it, it's about two students, two medical students, who start experimenting with, um, near-death experiences and they have this theory that a near-death experience will turn somebody into what is called an extraordinary in this world and an extraordinary is kind of somebody with superhero powers more or less uh, so each extraordinary has a different kind of power um, so it's a bit like an X-Men kind of situation and you've got these these two characters who are friends at the beginning but they have a disagreement and end up being mortal enemies. Then 10 years later, I think it is, one of them gets out of jail and goes on a hunt for revenge. Then we have Take Nothing With You by Patrick Gale, a complete roundabout turn from the previous one. I mean, we had urban fantasy superheroes and then we have a an urban realistic setting. Um, this is set in England, in London and Western Supermare. So this is about a man called Eustace who finds out that he has cancer and he is in a radiotherapy unit. So he's isolated from other people for 24 hours or possibly more. 
and so he has a lot of time to reflect on his childhood during this period and that is the main part of the story is kind of how he came to be who he is. So he is a cellist and he is gay in a time when being gay isn't necessarily seen as a great thing. Um, so those two things lend an interesting perspective to his story and being a cellist myself that whole uh, music side of thing is, things is what made me really love this um, but also Patrick Gale's writing um, I need to read more of his stuff because whenever I have read his books I've loved them so if you are interested in classical music or a bit of LGBT history this is a fantastic read. Another contemporary one is Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller another author who I have always enjoyed reading. This has a really gothic vibe to it and um, there are a couple of books in this list that are quite gothic but contemporary and part of that is because they are staying at this old house we've got a woman called Frances and we find out at the beginning that she is in some kind of institution um, she's being cared for and that she is dying and again she's looking back at her life and how she ended up where she is and how she is. Um, so she spends a summer at this country house and her job is to kind of record and um, analyze the the goods that are going in and out uh, the, the estate is being cleared and there's lots of antiques and, and crockery and, and bits and bobs, hence the, the cover. She gets really obsessed, not with the work that she's supposed to be doing, but with the couple who are there who are doing a similar but different job in this place. And things go a bit weird from there. It's not clear how reliable her perspective is and there are lots of layers to what's going on. Another reason why I think this cover is so great. There's nothing in this is quite as it seems. So I, I love books that sort of flip your expectations in some way. And this is a book that definitely does that. Then we had The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. This is a book that I saw described somewhere as what, what a little life should have been. And I love A Little Life, but it's a really, really difficult book to read. I read it once, I went back a couple of years later to reread it and I just, I just couldn't. It was too hard. I got to a certain point and I just stopped. This I think I could read many times because unlike A Little Life, it's got these little bits of humour in there that just give it that, that those little bits of levity. And it doesn't do it in a way like some of the uh, recent Marvel films have done where you have a really solemn moment, you know, a serious moment, and then something humorous happens that kind of undercuts that. The humour doesn't undercut it, the, the humour accentuates the, the darkness within this book. Again, this is a sort of epic book on a small scale. So it's, it's a long book, it's covering more or less an entire life, but it focuses on one person. This is about a young man who is abandoned and adopted out at a young age and he is a, another gay character who is having to come to terms with that and he's living in Ireland so that gives it an extra level of tension because the, the very religious climate he's living in and um, that does make life very difficult for him. It begins in the 1940s and goes through to today so big scope. There are some jumps in time in there as well which I think are really important and in a similar way to how Ian McEwan will take small events and make them really big, you know, small decisions that change the course of a life. This is another one of those books where there are several points where his life changes dramatically due to a, a relatively small decision and I always like that sort of the the what ifs in in literature and this book is full of them. Next we have Pages for You by Sylvia Brownrigg, another LGBT story this time about two women and this reminded me of Call Me By Your Name by Andre Ackerman. Um, 
not in any really obvious way, but more um, a, a sense of the atmosphere and uh, it, it's got a summer setting, uh, at least part of it has, and the, the way that the emotions are, are conveyed, the, the feelings are between these two people. And I mean, there aren't really that many similarities. It's, it's written in third person and Call Me By Your Name is written in first person, but yet somehow it, it has those similarities. It has academic undertones as well, which I always love. Anne, who is the love interest of Flannery, is, the, is a tutor at the university. So that's how they meet, is at um, this academic institution. And yeah, I mean, it's a book where not a huge amount happens. It's really about the relationship and who these two people are. And I, I just loved it. It was very quiet. Um, unassuming read, but I got through it very quickly. And finally, we have Melmoth by Sarah Perry, who wrote The Essex Serpent, which I still haven't read, but I'm definitely going to read it having finished this because this was fantastic. Another very gothic book, contemporary setting, but there are little snippets of historical things in here too. So it's about Melmoth, this figure of Melmoth, who is a witness in history. Um, she was supposedly a, a woman who witnessed the resurrection of Christ, but then went and lied about it. So her punishment was to forever be a witness to the sins of humanity, which is a really interesting concept when you put it in a contemporary context. And so this figure is sort of drifting through this book as a mysterious force. We know that the main character, Helen Franklin, can see Melmoth or has seen Melmoth. And that is to do with something that happened in her past. And throughout the book, we find out more about this. We also find out more about the history of Melmoth and where Melmoth has appeared throughout history, uh, which is just a, a really neat concept. And I think Sarah Perry has done an amazing job with this. It's beautifully written as well. Her prose is excellent. And yeah, I imagine this will be on a lot of people's favourites list of this year. So that was going to be the last one, but I finished a book last night that I really enjoyed and I don't like to put books onto my favourite lists immediately. So this is a, a tentative entry, uh, but I finished the first in the Mistborn series last night and I just really enjoyed it. I was in the mood for fantasy and just, it was very immersive, a, a truly unique magic system, which is what Brandon Sanderson is known for. And I'm really excited to read the, the other books in this trilogy and just more of Brandon Sanderson in general. So I felt like that needed to be added because last year I read one of my favourite books of the year after I had filmed this video, which seemed a little bit sad. Anyway, those were my favourite books from 2018. What was your favourite book that you read this year? Let me know down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this and got some recommendations from this list. I always enjoy watching these videos because they usually form part of my TBR for the following year. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.